Hello and welcome to a special edition of South Today from Osborne House on the Isle of Wight. As an estimated 12,000 people pack the centre of cows for a visit by the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh. I was really close to her and I took some nice photographs, but it's a day I'll remember forevermore. <laughs> The New Forest Show marks the finale of a four-month Diamond Jubilee tour that's taken them to 50 places. I'll be exploring why Queen Victoria, the only other British monarch to celebrate a 60-year reign, was drawn to the island. And her husband, Prince Albert, said the views from here reminded him of Italy. But is our weather going to keep with this beautiful Mediterranean flavour? What a beautiful day to be on the Isle of Wight. The hottest day of the year so far, and we're here at Osborne House, the former home of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. And as you can see, the gardens below me here, rich and opulent, but this was very much a family home. We'll have more of that later in the programme. Of course, Queen Victoria was the only other British monarch to celebrate a diamond jubilee. But today, Her Majesty the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh brought to an end their Diamond Jubilee tour, which began in March, four months ago. They've already visited Salisbury and Henley-on-Thames in our region, but today it was the turn of Cows on the Isle of Wight and the New Forest Show in Hampshire. Let's start at Cows on the Isle of Wight with Bryony Leyland, who joined thousands of other people to greet the royal party this morning. In glorious sunshine, a glorious arrival. Her Majesty the Queen and His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh glided into cows on board the private yacht Leander, escorted by a flotilla of smaller craft and a parade of sail, and welcomed by a 21-gun salute. The royal couple transferred into a launch to complete their journey ashore. Watched by thousands, the crowds filled every inch of the waterfront, craning for a glimpse of the Diamond Queen. your binoculars on did you get a glimpse of, of that? Yes I did. I did coming through from uh, the west there still on the deck with the Duke. Wonderful sight, wonderful day. So I was really close to her and I took some nice photographs but it's a day I'll remember forevermore. <laughs> I come across yesterday especially for the occasion and um, well worth it and I think it's given a lot of boost to the island yes. Yeah, Absolute privilege. It's fantastic. It's fantastic to have the yeah. Queen. Cows must look Cairns, wonderful yes. from the sea because yes. it looks very Mediterranean. We wish she'd come more often. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. lovely it was. Yeah, it's yeah. Beautiful. We're still grinning here from here. <laughs> After the walkabout, a sit down for a specially written Jubilee song. The wondrous tale how times have changed. The Queen unveiled a plaque for her Diamond Jubilee, next to one marking Queen Victoria's in 1897. The RNLI's new £1 million lifeboat station, complete with new lifeboat, was given the Royal Seal of Approval. A big day for the team who've worked so hard to bring this project to fruition. It's so prestigious to have the Queen come and open our lifeboat station. Um, it's been fantastic and we've been you know, buzzing since this morning about it and, and for weeks prior. So uh, yeah, very, very good, very privileged. Dame Ellen MacArthur, whose Cancer Trust supports young people, guided the Queen around displays by marine volunteers and youth organisations. As a parting gift, the royal couple were given a hamper of island produce, complete with a doggy bag of cured meat for the corgis, who may be seeing a little more of their Queen as the Jubilee tour reaches its conclusion. Bryony Leyland, BBC South Today, Cows. Quite a reception at Cows on the Isle of Wight, indeed, I think you'll, you'll see there. And I can tell you that the Queen was given a bouquet and had some Osborne myrtle in it. And if just behind me there, one of those bushes is the Osborne myrtle bush given to Queen Victoria. And every royal bride has a piece of that in their bouquet. Well, now, it's a very, very busy summer for the Queen. We know the Diamond Jubilee she was celebrating in June. And indeed, this Friday, she'll be formally opening the London Olympics. But today, she was also in Hampshire at the New Forest Show, mingling with so many people. And Caroline Richardson was there. 
Word quickly spread through the showground that Her Majesty the Queen and His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh had arrived. Crowds surged forwards. The royal party had to bypass some of the exhibits they had planned to see. The Queen and Prince Philip have been treated to a very vintage feel here at the New Forest. Some of these tractors are 60 years old, and 60 is a magic number for obvious reasons. And the theme is Best of British. We briefly explained to her what we had on display here, from the threshing to the wood cutting, uh, the Victorian cooking display, uh, various numerous uh, vintage tractors on display, and particularly this, this tractor here, which is, uh, has a royal connection in as much that it was uh, involved with the Queen Mother when she was alive back in 1977 at the Smithfield Show. In the best of British tents, the Queen and Prince Philip looked at some classic crafts and produce. She asked me um, whether the horses came in different sizes, uh, which I said yes they did, right from quite a small one right up to quite huge horses, which are just for adults. Great privilege, amazing lady, really gentle, lovely, lovely lady. I was just quite stunned actually. <laughs> it was just really lovely to meet her. Oh, it's great, I've never met the Queen before, so we were all waiting. It was really nerve-wracking, it's bizarre. It sounds silly, but I'm still a bit sort of spaced out really so we almost don't want to go back to work and sort of sit down and enjoy the moment because it's, you know you don't get many opportunities to meet the queen or have a conversation with her so it's good really good as temperatures nudged 30 degrees or maybe higher the itinerary continued in the show ring the queen and prince philip watched a parade of 60 new forest ponies there was also a fine display of livestock breeds, all on their best behaviour. <laughs> to end her visit, the Queen planted a tree, an English oak, which couldn't be more fitting in a forest that's been so loved by the kings and queens of England for a thousand years. Caroline Richardson, BBC South Today, at the New Forest Show. It really has been a glorious day for the Royal Tour, hasn't it, and the end of the Diamond Jubilee Tour. Well, this is, of course, Osborne House behind me here, which we're going to take a look back inside in just a moment. But let me just tell you that Queen Victoria spent about 90 to 100 days here every year until she died here in 1901. Her coffin was taken through East Cows, through the High Street, with the soldiers, taken down, of course, to the port there and on to Portsmouth on board the Royal Yacht Alberta. Well, a few days ago, I came over here to join the curator, Michael Hunter, who showed me inside Osborne House. Queen Victoria and Prince Albert loved the Isle of Wight and after they got married they looked for a summer home here on the island but they couldn't really find anything that fitted the bill until they found this plot of land. There was a country house on it, they bought it for £26,000, they demolished it and then they built their dream home. <laughs> How would you describe the design of Osborne House then? It's very Italianate in style. I mean, it's almost as if one had been plopped down in the middle of Italy somewhere. <laughs> I mean, Albert had recently been to Italy before he came to Osborne, was in love with art, uh, Italian art and architecture. And I um, mean, it's also said that the, the view from Osborne reminded him of the Bay of Naples. What do you think Osborne House meant to them as a family? Well, I think it meant privacy, enjoyment, you know, it must have been paradise, I think, to escape the smogs and, you know, grind of London and Windsor and come out here to Osborne and really have fun. By the 1890s, Queen Victoria was struggling to get up and down the stairs, so they built this, a lift which would take her to her private rooms above, and all she'd do is come in, sit down and press the bell. She was very wary of new things like electricity, so this lift worked on a sort of counterbalance system. So a servant would sit here below stairs all day in this room, waiting for the Queen to ring that bell. This is the Darbar room, Sally. Incredible room. Isn't it? Heavily, it's sort of Indian influence here, isn't it? I mean, who would have yes. designed it? Yes. Well, it was designed by Rudyard Kipling's father, Lockwood Kipling. 
Uh, Queen Victoria never got to India, you know, too far. Communications she was Empress difficult. of India, though, wasn't she? She was, but, uh, you know, although she couldn't get there, uh, India came to her. <laughs> A little bit of India at Osborne House. Prince Albert, with his keen eye for design, would have come up here on the roof and used a kind of system of semaphore to the guys down there who would then plant the trees where he wanted them so that nothing would obstruct that view. And it is stunning, isn't it? We'll have more from Osborne House later in the programme, but now let's get the rest of the news with Laura Trapp.